All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe, this is another Power Connection segment with Kevin Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen. And I have two beautiful people on today as well. But before we get to them, I want to let you know this is Power Connections, guys. What is Power Connections? Well, we bring powerful people like Mr. Tony Green and Sister Robin Butler on to talk about the powerful educational piece that we're going to talk about today, African American Studies. I can't wait to talk about that subject today. I am so excited about this topic, guys, because it is such, uh, such a needed area, not only in our nation, the United States, but also around the world. The goal, uh, as uh, Mr. Green will share with us a little later, is to share the truth. We just want to know what happened, guys, with us. We just want to know the truth about our history and about the history of our people, ladies and gentlemen, all across the network and all across the globe. So we're excited about you being with us today. Hey, guys, those listening live right now, thank you so much for being with us. I want you to share this out. This is so important. Not only is it important for you, but it's important for your children grandchildren and great grandchildren to listen in today as well. But as we get started, guys, let's go and get rolling here. I want to introduce our special, special guest today, Mr. Tony Green, ladies and gentlemen, and also to my co-host too as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Green is a historian. Oh, y'all give him a hand for that. He's also a great mentor. Yes, yes. And a guest lecturer. He lectures around the country and maybe around the world. We'll hear about that as well. He's also coaches at one of the great high schools, ladies and gentlemen, in Oakland, California, the Bishop O'Dowell High School. He's gonna tell us a little bit about that, mainly the wonderful students that he's teaching and those wonderful minds that he's uh, molding towards the uh, future uh, of the network as well. So uh, Mr. Green, welcome to the network, sir. How are you today? God bless you. Thank you. I'm blessed and highly favored and, and welcome to all of you. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, let me go to my beautiful co-host, Sister Robin Butler, how you doing that, sister, today? Good bless you. Great, hey, Dr. Vaughn. Great Amen. to have Dr. Green on today. I'm super excited about talking yes. um, with Dr. Dr. Green just because I'm an educator. So yes. I know how important it yeah. is to talk about African-American studies. So Dr. Yeah. Green, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. We're excited to see what you have to offer the world. Hey, man. Thank you so much, Robin. Matter of fact, uh, Brother Green, when you uh, okayed to come on, I said the first person I thought about was Robin Butler. <laughs> hey, she don't play, boy. Hey, a little bit That's about Miss Robin, ladies and gentlemen. She is a multi-talented professional who has served the people through uh, human resources. That's her, her forte area, professional counseling and community outreach, which is powerful. As we know, we need more Robin Butler in our nation right now continually advocating for the recognition and valuing of people's ability to create and choose the life they desire. She's also a connector. She's a networker too, ladies and gentlemen, involved with the community organizations and business alliance. Thank you so much, Robin. You all give her a hand as well as we bring on Ms. Robin Butler, my co-host for today. Wow, let's get started. Well, one thing I always like to do, uh, Brother Green, is give opening statement. There's a lot going on as it relates to education today, a lot going on in our nation, but I want to give you some opening comments. Anything you'd like to say before we get started on our questions with you today? Well, um, first of all, uh, um, welcome. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's great to always talk about yeah. um, African and African-American history and African-American studies, yes, sir. Uh, since we are the original people, Yes. right? So you, you think the origin of humanity you're talking about 250,000 years ago, somewhere in East Africa. Yes, sir. Uh, geneticists now call, you know, the original uh, uh, mother of all of us, myochondrial Eve. And so there is a connection between Africa and every other human on, on Earth, you know, close to uh, seven to eight billion people right now. Yes, sir. So it's always a pleasure. Um, and it's always a pleasure to, to uh, um, you know, set the record straight because uh, according to Malcolm X, mm -hmm. you know, our history has been, you know, manipulated, yeah. you know, in order to, uh, um, you know, to develop an institution, yeah. in which he calls, uh, um, you know, a slave mentality, right? right? Because you could not right. um, uh, subjugate a group. Yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, have a little technical difficulty, I think. People Green without Green. first taking control of their minds and the foundation of history. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that, Brother Green. Uh, Sister Robin, any comments, opening comments as relates to uh, education in this area you'd like to open up with? Um, 
I'm just going to reserve a few of my comments that I do have for okay. the rest of the interview. Um, because I'm, I'm ready. That's the part I'm ready to hear. Yeah. I'm ready to hear what Dr. Yeah, let's, Green well, let's has just, to say. Yeah, let's just jump right in there. I love it because time is money and money is time. And we thank God for both of your times today uh, being on the network. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening live right now, I want you to share this out. This is a very important broadcast today. And I can't wait to push this out on 10 other platforms. And I want at least uh, 20, 30,000 people to see this over time here uh, on the network as well. You know, Brother Green, one thing we talked about is your students. Can you say just, a, we're going to get into this a little bit more, but can you just say something about your wonderful students that have uh, been in your classes? Well, if you're talking about, uh, um, see, I've been teaching this class for about, you know, some semblance of, of African-American studies or a rise yeah. of Black nationalism for about yes. 35 years. Oh, I love it. And so, wow. um, the, you know, the, the original students that I had, you know, way back when, yeah. you know, some of them are early 60s right now. Oh, okay. Don't call out any names, you yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. I hear you, brother. But a lot of them are really uh, big movers and shakers in society. Uh, yeah. One person that comes to mind is a, a student I had, I believe, in 1989. His name is Brian Tippins, and uh, Brian Tippins is the former vice president of Hewlett Packard. I think he's currently the vice president of Cisco Systems. Ah. And last wow. Yeah, and last summer. Uh, wow. um, you know, he was doing a podcast called Core Intentions Podcast. Uh -huh. And, you know, I didn't know he was doing a podcast, but he yeah. had sent me like an email and told me to listen to this podcast. Yeah. So I was checking his podcast out. And he told me one of the major influences in his life and oh, the reason why he was able to excel, yeah. you know, from a, um, you yeah. know, from a youngster in, in uh, oh, yeah. you know, deep East Oakland, you know, yeah. back during the 1980s. And things yeah. were very problematic for Black America. Yeah. You know, in the mid to late 1980s, yeah. and he said it was the uh, um, you know the foundation that he was given yeah. in the study of um, Black yeah. history, yeah. which is what we used to call it at the time. Yeah, yeah. Him look at himself and mm -hmm. what he was seeing, in a um, you know in, in a different, uh, yeah. you know, sort of a, a, a different uh, feeling. So yeah. he understood, yeah. and as a result, he it's a platform to move on. Yeah, you know, wow. and uh, um, yeah, we we've had a, a lot of uh, yeah. students. Uh, yeah, let's see, uh, um, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris. I had her niece in class, oh. uh, Mina Harris, and she's got this huge. Uh, uh, you know, she was one of uh, um, you know the, the biggest supporters of of Kamala Harris. Yeah, um, in her run to the president, and um, you know, she currently has a company. I think it's called Phenomenal Women Enterprises. Okay. you know, doing great things. And yeah. and so a lot of the students mm -hmm. that I've come in contact with, uh, um, you know, are doing really, really well. Yeah. Right? And they're from, you know, an area that was not always the, uh, um, you know, not always the easiest to navigate. Right. And a lot of it, you know, I would accredit to, you know, their foundation in African-American yeah. history. Yeah. The students I have currently are definitely top-notch students. Yeah. You know, some of the yeah. students, you know, you would, uh, um, you might track as, you know, AP, uh, right. you know, students. Yeah, we're talking, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just with us here, we're talking to Brother Tony Green. and little... The other students came in as a uh, the course. And they started to understand who they were and who mm -hmm. we are. You yes, know, sir. they ended up acing the course. Oh, that's powerful. powerful. Came up with some great projects. Amen. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Mr. Tony Green and my co-host today, Robin Butler. We're getting ready to interview uh, Mr. Tony Green. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a teacher. Uh, I, I'm a, I call you a professor, actually. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm not sure if you got that status or yes. not, Mr. Green, but you're a professor, I believe. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a professor at the wonderful, wonderful high school, the Bishop O'Dell High School in Oakland, California. Hey, let's get right to it, Robin. Let's get, get started here on these questions. Hey, Brother Green, let's get started here. Tell, if you would, uh, you already kind of started already because kind of segue into this here. Uh, please tell us a little bit about your history. I'm wanting to teach uh, this important area. And matter of fact, let me mention too, uh, Brother Green, before you get started, the program is Advanced Placement African American studies. Make sure I got that right. Yes. Is that correct? Very good. That oh, is sure correct. Got, yes, sir. I that want to is make sure correct. I got that right. So college level course. Yeah. It's in its uh this is the second year of its pilot. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're developing it. So yeah. there's a variety of changes. You know, we right, meet uh, right. uh, on a regular basis to yep. you know to discuss. 
Absolutely. So let me ask you the first question, if you don't mind, even though I didn't put it out. What is the goal of that then? It, 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 obviously, somebody had to come up with that. Uh, what is the goal, uh, overall goal for the advanced placement of African-American studies? I would say the overall goal is actually, um, you know, creating a foundation of understanding mm. of who people of African descent um, are historically. Okay. Because, uh, um, you know, most of our educational system is based on um, you know, Western civ, yeah, yeah. you know, which is, yeah. um, you know, we, we know actually here in, in America, it comes from uh, Thomas Jefferson's uh, model. Uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, copied from, uh, um, you know, from uh, um, uh, Baron de Montesquieu, who wrote this book called The Spirit of the Laws, mm. in which he outlines, you know, not only our, uh, um, you know, three branch system of government, he talked about the only types of leadership models that existed in human history. One of them he outlined was a republic, right? Uh, United States is a republic. Yes, and he sir. says, this, in order for uh, a republic to succeed, you must instill civic virtue in the population. So you must have this the uh, uh, people who vote right, who fight in wars, yeah. who pay taxes, who obey laws, they must feel proud of the Republic, and then they act on behalf of the Republic, right? Initially, when that idea was established, Black folks were not a part of the Republic, right? so it was not essential to, to uh, uh, cast us in a positive light. Right. Uh, around the turn of the 19th and 20th century, Marcus Mosiah Garvey came up with a similar eye black America, when he would say, uh, up you mighty race, you can't accomplish what you will. So mm -hmm. essentially what he was saying is in order for uh, black people or Africans to achieve their greatness, they mm -hmm. have to understand who they are. Right. And that foundation must be set in history. Yeah. Right? So that's essentially the reason why uh, uh, African advanced placement African American studies one of the reasons why it was created is yes, to set the record straight about who we are. I love it. Oh, thank you so much for that. Robin, any comment there, ma'am? I I just wanted to say, first of all, I, I'm excited, Dr. Green, that you get to see the impact of what you've taught in yeah. your students and the success that they had. Um, because I know a lot of times as an educator, it's difficult to know if you're truly having an impact. So I, I appreciate that you're getting your flowers now from some of your students that are doing some great things um, in their fields, what, whether they're working for Hewlett Packard or in the Intel yeah. or they're working in government. I, I think that's beautiful. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that, you know, 35 years teaching a subject is, is, is definitely commendable. I mean, I'm 15 years into education. And so you, you're like, I have an inch to your mile, right? I'm about an inch to your mile in, in, in this field. Um, yeah. And so as I'm thinking about, because here in Georgia, African-American studies is not offered in public education. Mm -hmm. um, that's reserved. And you did say it's a college level class is being taught in high school, which is great. Um, so you know, I, I would just wonder, how do you think if African-American studies was offered in public schools, how would that be different for students who were matriculating through public school? I would say, if you look at, uh, um, you know, my connection with, with, with the students, uh, um, you know, over time, yeah. it's completely and totally transformational. Yes, sir. and it will be completely and totally transformational. Absolutely, because uh, um, you know a lot of our students now, you know, I believe, um, you know, fall victim to uh, um, some of the propaganda they hear about us. Right, 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 and what the what you know what they see in the right, and without anything to counter that, you know, it's yeah. very difficult, you know, to to actually uh, you know create a platform, right, yeah. and I feel unfortunate. Uh, you limit yourself if you don't know uh, uh, what your possibilities are. Right. Right. And if you look at, you know, the, the wealthiest empires in the world have been African empires. Right. 
right? The, some of the most educated people in the world, right. you know, uh, um, West Africans, North Africans, East Africans, right? You, you had uh, uh, um, you, you had kingdoms such as Mali, uh, um, you know, that actually used not only gold and salt <laughs> as currency, as they use books as, as currency. You know, they use books. So yeah. what does that tell you about, you know, who we are uh, yeah. and who we, uh, um, yeah. who we can become, right? And it tells them the same thing about who they are and who they can become. So you don't fall, you know, to, you know, to a lot of propaganda that's out there. Yeah, that's powerful. Thank you so much. Hey, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, just joining us. This is uh, Power Connections uh, with my wonderful guest and co-host today, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Green. Uh, out of California, and we're talking about today the program, Advanced uh, Placement African American Studies. And I, I can tell you, uh, Brother Green and, and Sister Robin, that you mentioned that I wrote down two, a couple of things here while you was talking. This study, if you will, this class, this study gives us awareness. First of all, it gives us awareness, uh, no doubt about for other, lack of other words, and also gives us a positive position to understand who we are and who our people are. And without a doubt, that motivates me. Even today, everything you just said motivates me even more. Now, my background is engineering. And because of some of the things that my teachers have said and done, it put me in a position. I'm talking about my Black teachers and educators and professors that helped me understand who I really was, that I didn't have to fall into the traps, if you will, of all the things that uh, we are not, <laughs> if you will. So, so that's powerful. You're right. This is so criti critical that we make sure this is taught. Uh, we're going to have to do a better job on getting it in the high schools and even at the middle school levels as well as some version of it. So we make sure that the, that the truth is taught. That's what it's all about there as well. Robin, over to you, my, my dear, over to you. So Dr. Grant, I think my, my next question, I, I looked at your resume and I love the quote where you says, I love working with the next generation of decision makers yeah. um, because it's as educators, like you said, it's our obligation, right, to yeah. do that. And so I was thinking about, because what I'm seeing is that with, we're having banks are starting to collapse. Um, the legislative piece of our government is what I would say starting to collapse with affirmative action being taken away. Um, and it's probably not a collapse so much, but a restructuring. Um, I think it's positioning people to to be able to have choice of other things. But yeah. what do you see is the future of education? You know, I would I would say this, uh, uh, and I'd like to to, to focus on uh, uh, something that Kevin said. Uh, uh, you know, for for a minute here. You know, the the courses I teach is I teach also an advanced world history as well as advanced placement African American history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once the students take a serious look at history, and remember the students are our foundation, you know, that it's the next generation that's gonna take over. Yep. Once they fully understand and embrace history, they look at things differently. Yes. Within 30, well, within 16 years, they're yeah. gonna be replacing me. Yeah. Right? So whatever we pour them now, they're gonna be uh, the decision makers, Robin, who deal with all of these issues. Right. And as a nation, we're about 246 years old. And to go back to Kevin's point, uh, as an engineer, you take a civilization uh, um, like that of Egypt, 7000 years old. Mm -hmm. And you think that between five and six thousand years ago. And mm -hmm. Kevin, I think you would appreciate this. OK, you had a group of people, you know, these uh, uh, committed people. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the Greeks called them Egyptians, but they call themselves Kemites. They call themselves black people mm -hmm. of this fertile black earth, you mm -hmm. know, which was the Nile River Delta. So about 5000 years ago, they were able to create a, a strong out of 2.5 million stones that rose to 483 feet in height. Mm -hmm. Right. Each stone um, was the hardest mineral known at that time. Wow. So you think about as an engineer, the yeah. complexity yeah. to cut yeah. 2.5 million pounds of an average weight of about seven pounds, wow. then cut them with the uh, uh, perfection, mm. right? That they fit wow. together just like a perfect puzzle piece right, right. that sits on true north, right? right? The stones being 7,000 pounds 
And a lot of those stones had to be moved yep. 60 miles. Right? So that's the, the uh, wow. um, you know, the intellectual heft that we've had yeah. for a long period of time. You know, like I said, 5,000 years. If we mine that in these students today, they can solve any of these problems, yeah. which are not, should not be that significant for right. a nation who's, uh, uh, you know, who, who's, who's worth, right, whose gross domestic product is about $25 trillion. Mm -hmm. So we have the financial resources to solve any problems that we have, but we have to have the, the you know, the willingness Mm -hmm. Right. And we have to work together like the Egyptians worked on this structure. Right. Five thousand years ago, this complex five thousand years ago. But we have the intellectual heft. So uh, to answer your question a little bit more directly, Robin, you know, it depends on the leadership models that we present. Right. We are the elders and we've always been the leaders of our community. Right, so it, it, it's it's on the elders and it's on that next group coming up, right? But we have to work together. Uh, yeah. You know, the Congolese called it an embongi, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's it's we have to work together yeah. as a unit, a learning unit, which is not limited by ideas or space. Right. Right. I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe, right now we're talking to Mr. Tony Green, ladies and gentlemen. He is an educator and a teacher, historian, mentor, and also a guest lecturer around the globe, ladies and gentlemen, and a coach at Bishop O'Dowell High School in Oakland, California. He's our special guest today. And my beautiful and awesome co-host there, Ms. Robin Butler, is with us today. We're having a great time talking about the program, Advanced Placement African American Studies, that is being released uh, through uh, Mr. Green and others, I'm sure, as well. And we're just excited about the expansion of that as well. You know, Mr. Green, one thing you mentioned earlier is it's is so important uh, that this continues and that this be enhanced, as you know, uh, in our nation specifically and around the globe. But it, the impact is so significant. That's what I get excited about. Once they hear your lecture, hear your uh, information, your teaching and training, it is going to literally change their mindset for the positive. It's going to let them know there's no and really no boundaries for uh, exploration, uh, innovation, uh, uh, ideas, and, and things that they want to do with their life. You know, I had real quickly. I had one black girl. She wanted to be an underwater welder mm -hmm. when we did a, a, a career day, Robin. I couldn't believe it that she even knew about that. But we said we're going to make sure she learns how to get to that. You know. So that's how important it is that she knew that she could do that. She said, I'm going to be an underwater welder and the best in the world. And I said, man, that is great. So our, our goal then was to make sure she gets the right tools and understanding on how to get to that goal. But this type of studies will help them understand that we have a history of people who do those type of that can do those type of things through the knowledge and the power that they have inside of them. So thank you so much, Brother Green, for what you do in the teaching of these uh, awesome, awesome students that you do hear about, and I'm sure you'll hear more about in the future as well. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Power Connections with uh, Mr. Tony Green, our special guest, and my co-host, Robin Butler. Hey, uh, Brother Green, if you don't mind, uh, um, uh, talk about the importance, uh, as kind of talked about it already, but how important is it to you? Because you've been doing it for a while, but what really pulled you into this area of teaching, sir? Well, it, you know, it, it's interesting. I would have to say definitely my family background, okay. right? Because that's the foundation of all of us. Yeah. Um, you know, I come from, uh, uh, you know, an interesting background. You know, my, uh, um, you know, uh, my mama's side, uh, um, we're black Seminole from Florida. Ah. You know, my, uh, yeah. um, my auntie, uh, um, wow. auntie uh, Ecola Hinton uh, Jackson yeah. was an educator. Yes, right, sir. she was sort of the prime educator and the the family historian. Yeah, and, uh, um, my mom was a nurse. Uh, both of them went to uh, uh, historically black colleges. Yes, sir. Um, you know, my mom went to uh, from, she's from FAMU, Florida A and M University. Okay, my auntie is from uh, Bethune Cookman. Yeah, you know, and so we did this. You know, we we do this project on Mary McLeod Bethune yeah. uh, and her responsibility for establishing the Tuskegee Airmen. That very yeah. few people knew about because yeah, right. she was a black woman, 
Right. You know, but she led this, uh, um, you know, this organization that would be named the Black Brain Trust. And she was the head of all of these, these Black intellectuals that would solve a lot of our problems moving yes. into the uh, civil rights movement, uh, through the civil rights movement, almost to the Black power movement. Yes. So that was my foundation. You know, on my dad's side, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was dedicated military. He didn't go to college. You know, he had a, 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 you know, he had a difficult upbringing, but, you know, went into the military and w- was part of, a, a, you know, a early experiment called the Fortson experiment that very few people knew about in mm-hmm. which, uh, um, you know, the military was actually being integrated, uh, um, you know, sort of undercover during the Korean War. And I've uh-huh. got all these pictures of these wow. integrated units, wow. you know, that they were they were trying to incorporate into the military because we were losing the uh, Korean War initially. Yeah. You know, so he was part of this experiment in Valdosta, Georgia, um, mm. at Moody Air Force Base, uh, as a matter of fact, where there would be these integrated units and they would have these athletic teams of, you know, mix, you know, uh, Latinos, mm-hmm. uh, black folks and, and white folks. And there would be these white cheerleaders. And this is in 1952. And, you know, as a youngster, when I was looking at these pictures, I couldn't really figure it out. Yeah. But it was part of this experiment because we were, you know, we were being defeated. We were almost pushed off the Korean Peninsula at the Battle of uh, the Pusan Perimeter. So the nation realized that we better integrate and we better get it together yeah. and not we lose. So, you know, that's from the, the foundation that I'm from. Uh, yeah. You know, wow. my mama, you know, to, to wake us up, used to sing uh, Nina Simone. Uh, yeah. she, we didn't have an alarm clock. She would sing to be young, gifted and black. Wow. Right? So in the 1960s, when things weren't really positive for black folks, she yeah. would sing us this song every morning. And it really stuck with me. Yeah. You know, it really stuck with me to be young, gifted and black. I still use it in class today. Yeah. You know, uh, um, went to a, a, a school in the housing projects in Vallejo, California, uh, called uh, uh, Flawson Elementary School, and it was in the Floyd Terrace Housing Projects. Uh, um, E-40 talks about, you know, the housing projects, Floyd Terrace all the time in a lot of his songs, because he's a Vallejo person. Mm -hmm. But um, in that school, we used to have very young teenage uh, Black Panthers teach us Black history, Mm -hmm. right? So I've been infused with that from a very early age. So as I moved through my... uh, um, you know, my elementary and high school years, yeah. it was very difficult to fool me right. who you were because I had that deep foundation right. that's you know, early on. Yeah, that's key right there, guys. Y'all hear that? Man, I, I call that tenacity, yeah, Sister Robert. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you yes. can't tell me the, the, that you what you talk about is wrong. You, you know, I, I love it because I know where we're from and who we do. Uh, what we do in, in, in history and what we and how important we are in history as well. You know, Brother Green, I was thinking about and Robin too. I was thinking about this. How important, I just want to share this with everybody because I, I've done this. Is it okay to do a DNA check or ancestry check? Would you recommend that, Brother Green? You know what? I you know, I'm not that familiar with it, so I can't recommend it, you okay. know, one way or another. Yeah. But uh, you know, different people find their truths different yeah. ways. Right. You know, they find right. their truths different ways. Right. You know, the uh, um, you know, the interesting thing is when you look um when you look at Africans and yeah. you look at the term African or the term black, yeah. Black, uh, um, you know, they're between three and four thousand different ethnic groups in Africa. Yes, sir. Right, and they, you know, it, so it's it's really difficult, you yeah. know, especially uh, uh, um, you know, with with the diaspora that takes place yeah. that we were, you know, collected right. uh, um, and put together just because we were of a certain skin tone, right. as far as Europeans were concerned. So they thought we were one group. But yeah. uh, in actuality, the people that on the diaspora came from right. uh, up to 50 different ethnic wow. groups. So a lot of times, you know, our blood mixed, right? Then, you know, yeah. at the turn of the 20th century, right. uh, Marcus Garvey came up with this idea that we are all united Black folks because we have common needs uh, and common, should have common objectives mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, struggling for our identity. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it, it's so it, it's 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 difficult, but different right. people find their truths different ways. Absolutely. Robin, any thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, I, I'd have to agree with Dr. Green on that is that because, um, you, you know, I would think with the DNA testing, while it's good to help you figure out your roots yeah. and where you're from. 
Right. Um, I caught sometimes I caution against things because sometimes we don't know how that information is being used. That's correct. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but we as spiritual beings know that yeah. we resonate with certain things right. internally. Right. So when you start to resonate with certain things, there's a piece of truth within you that right. causes you to resonate with that. Right. Right. So I look at Dr. Green's history. Yeah. With his mother instilling education and intelligence into him, his father instilling strength. Yeah. All those things begin to resonate within right. him. Yeah. And then you get the teaching of the Black Panther instructors. Yeah. All of that has infused into who he is today because yeah. those things begin to resonate with him along his path and his yeah. journey. Yeah. And so it's it's just the it's just beautiful how yes, it is. when you start your path and your journey, how it unfolds certain truths that you get you've researched. Right, Dr. Green, you became curious about certain things. You began mm -hmm. to reach out certain things, and that curiosity led you into your truth being an African American, I would say, professor and not teacher. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, that's powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us around the network here, uh, talking to uh, with my co host today, Robin Butler, we're talking to Mr. Uh, Anthony Green, Mr. Tony Green, ladies and gentlemen. He is a wonderful, wonderful historian. He's a mentor. He's a guest lecturer around the globe there. He's also a coach, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but he also, mainly what we're talking about today, he's a teacher, ladies and gentlemen, the advanced program, excuse me, advanced placement um, African-American studies program at Bishop O'Dell High School in Oakland, California. He's our special guest today. Our focus is on the African-American studies, the importance of that area. Robin, I'll give it to you, my dear. Yeah, I wanted to come back to the conversation where we were talking about, Dr. Green, you said it's upon us um, as elders to teach our children who they are yeah. and infuse that into their daily life. I, mean, I look at the systemic issues of public education. I look at a lot of our um, religious communities so how do we begin to, I guess, reconcile all of that and take what you said? If you have any idea strategically how we can begin to do that, I think that's helpful for the whole to hear. You know what, I would answer that, uh, um, you know, by looking at, you know, you know, looking at uh, uh, the question through the lens of uh, uh, the Advanced Place in African American uh, Studies course. So, um, the head of um, advanced placement African American studies was doc is Dr. Brandy Waters. She brought us together at Howard University last summer, and originally there were six, uh, sixty of us. So sixty different schools would mm -hmm. look at what Dr. Brandy puts together in four different units. Yes, and if you look at the units of study, you know each unit is foundational to the next unit. Right. And it moves not only in topical sequence, but it moves in chronological sequence. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you look at us as black people, I would give the same advice for us. When your child is born, just like my mom and, and my uh, my auntie would pour into me and pour yeah. into my brothers and sisters. And I got mm -hmm. two brothers and uh, or had two brothers and have two sisters, you know, from very early age you start planting the seeds, right? And at each stage of development, you plant more seeds. Uh, um, I've got a, uh, you know, a, a former student, uh, um, you know, who actually uh, uh, develops, uh, uh, he develops uh, uh, children's books. Yeah, he's, a, yeah. he's a basketball player, okay. right? Former basketball player, he's six foot nine. Okay. And what he does is he develops children's books and he develops, uh, um, he works for Pixar now. No. And what he does in his children's books is he looks at yeah. the story, you know, different ethnic stories. Mm -hmm. right? These ethnic stories have different, uh, um, you know, they have different moral teachings, mm -hmm. different historical teachings, right? If you look at the media that we present in our children, if it would mirror that understanding that, you know, Dr. Brandy Waters, 
you know, you know, creates this chronology of development, yeah. right? And each stage of chronology of development, we infuse that love of history. We infuse that love of culture, you know, food, music, mm-hmm. dance, spirituality, mm-hmm. right? And that's and it, and it's tied to you know who we are as people. The mm-hmm. outcome is going to be a lot different, mm-hmm. you know. So I would say that's the solution, and that's what we have to iron out. And with our twenty-five trillion dollar economy and the edge system, if we looked at things differently and stop engaging in propaganda yeah. and start to look at, you know, humans develop regardless of what skin color is. Yeah. then things look different. Yeah, absolutely. That's powerful, powerful, Robert. That was a great question there. And thank you so much, uh, Mr. Green, for sharing that with us as well. You know, with that follow-up there, Brother Green and Sister Robin, I wrote down while you was talking here, I want to hear from both of you, Mr. Green first and then uh, Sister Robin. Right now, as you know, we have PTA, uh, uh, PTA organizations around the country. We have our parent organizations that are out, maybe outside of PTA, but they have, they're organized. We also have family reunions, you know, that are organized. I mean, people, they got three, 400 people in a, uh, every year or every other year they meet, you know, somewhere in the nation. I've met some of them this weekend. It was amazing in Atlanta. And then last but not least, how can we help our school boards? Uh, I want to hear from both of you on what can we do to introduce or uh, present or influence these areas so they can start bringing in some of this training and education. Um, Brother Green, your, your thoughts about that? So I would say one thing is uh, um, in, in our family, uh, um, we had established, uh, um, you know, a family reunion uh, yeah. in 1964 is the first I could remember. And we would travel across the country. Yeah. Uh, we traveled from California, you know, back home to Florida. Wow. And it was a lot, lot different uh, than California. Yeah. Right. And what we did during the course of the family reunion, like a lot of family reunions do, is we look at family history, there you go. right? And uh, so what I would advise, uh, um, you know, and a lot of us do that, and, and it's actually covered in Advanced Placement African American okay. uh, Studies. The reason why we have these family reunions is because of the dislocation mm-hmm. that occurred during slavery. So once slavery ends, we try to find those people who were lost during the trade, mm. right? So we reconnect, wow. right? But one of the things we do in, in class is we've got a project, we call it the Sankofa Project. And uh, Sankofa is a twee word, of course, and it, uh, the uh, emblem of it is uh, uh, a bird with an egg on its back where it looks back at the egg and it grabs the egg, which is the next generation. Mm. Once that bird turns around, that egg now becomes the new generation, mm. right? And there's a belief amongst the twee people that if you set that foundation, you know, the current generation or the elders set that foundation and pass it on, okay, then uh, uh, the connections of who you are become very apparent. So I would say set those connections, find out who your family members are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once you find out who your family members are and some of the, the just spectacular things they've done, you start to look yeah. at yourself yeah. differently, Absolutely. you know. That's powerful, powerful. Robin, I know you've been working on this for a while as well, this area. And you, any thoughts about this area, ma'am? Um, you know, it it's to me, it's a we we have to kind of backdoor. Um, yeah. and what I mean by that, I, I do like what Dr. Green was talking about, his student that is creating books and right. books that speak to our history, speak to our morality, um, you know, speak to our culture, because Gener- the generation now, entertainment is everything. Entertainment and education are interchangeable mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for this generation. Um, they 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 want to be entertained, but we got to figure out how do we entertain them and educate them at the same time. Yes. And so I think we have to combine modalities to be able to do that. Um, and, and in a very strategic way, I, I was just as Dr. Green was talking, I was thinking about the family reunions. Well, yeah. you know, I can't tell you the last time I've been to a family reunion, just because those traditions right. are beginning to die off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, I think about, you know, what other ways, you know, that's culturally relevant that has taken the place of family reunions, right? So we right. do, now we're doing networking events. Everybody wants to do networking yeah, events. Yeah. You know, we have to figure out what are those, um, those areas and those assemblies that are happening that we can recreate to, mm -hmm. you know, take the place of our family reunions or, you know, parent teacher conferences or, you know, what are the, whatever those traditional right. meetings Absolutely. were. Um, I feel like we really have to start to be intentional about engaging those, those types of organizations and those yeah. connections. Absolutely. And as you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a family, you know, organized family reunion, somebody has to be a leader, right? In that, in that family in order to take the lead, right? And any area, we'll talk about the PTA, the parent organizations, the family reunions, the school boards, all that. Somebody's got to say, yes, we need to look at this, need to uh, uh, present this to the board, you know, whatever has to be done. But we have to also understand, ladies and gentlemen, why. You know, that's a big one for me, uh, Brother Green and Robin, is why. Why are we doing this? I don't think people uh, share that enough on why. It's so important that we understand the why uh, moms and dads out there, grandmas and grandpas and great grandmas and great grandpas. We need to understand the why. It's gonna significantly change the trajectory, if you will, of our students, of our young people, of the next generation, as Brother Green just mentioned earlier about. So it's so important that we uh, at, least learn, at least learn about little history about grandma, you may have found that grandma had an invention you didn't even know about, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, just learn about your initial family first as much as you can on the positive side and just keep it moving, you know, so we want people to be hungry as uh, Les Brown would say, be hungry to find out a little bit about your, your background as well. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn and Robin Butler today with our special, special guest, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Green. He is a historian, mentor, guest lecturer, coach, and also, he is a wonderful, wonderful educator at the Bishop High School, Bishop Odell High School in Oakland, California. Our topic today, guys, we're talking about the program, Advanced Placement, African American Studies, that uh, Mr. Green is teaching now and having a great impact, and we're having a great time with him today. Robin, I want to make sure you get all your questions in, my dear. Anything else for Mr. Green? I have a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, so... My next question is, is that, um, you know, you talked about the difference you have been able to see that you've made on your students, but um, it's always interesting to hear, like, what has been your profound experience as a professor, as a teacher? Robert, I'm going to answer that by touching on something that you just said about the previous that Kevin had, uh, um, asked you. You know, what is remarkable wow. is where these students in, you know, you see them coming in as a 13 or 14 year old. Yeah. You work with them on the fields, yeah. but you never know who they're going to become That's if right. they don't limit themselves. And I'm going to give you a, a, a quick story that that uh, we'll, we'll speak on that. So, uh, um, you know, my son, he's, he's a lieutenant in Oakland Fire right now. And, uh, you know, I was used to coach him and I would coach a lot of the neighborhood kids and the kids in Oakland and yeah. you know, Richmond, Vallejo, it didn't matter where it was. And uh, some of these kids have done spectacular things, but I'm gonna give you a story about one of them. So uh, um, we had this basketball team and my son ran track uh, uh, and we had a number of kids. One uh, kid we had, uh, one young man we had, his name was Ron. And you know, real good worker, you know, hard worker. Mm -hmm. uh, both of his brothers went to to Bishop O'Dowd for a couple of years. They didn't graduate from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Ryan ends up working hard. He goes to St. Mary's High School in Berkeley, gets a scholarship to play football at St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. They drop their football program. He loses their scholarship. Mm -hmm. So with a lot of students at that point you know, they sort of lose their focus because they don't yeah. have their athletics anymore. Right. But what he was <laughs> able to do is he will, was able to exercise his passion. His passion was, was filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he goes up and he walks on at a school uh, in Sacramento, Sacramento State University, oh. right? So mm -hmm. while he's there, he starts to study films, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, sort of lose track of them for a while. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it ends up he 
there's this this film contest and wins this uh, this prize money and he develops starts developing films. And one day, uh, my son and I go up there because they had the Olympic track and field trials. And we see this young brother with long dreadlocks, you know, no shirt on, has this big ice chest. And we're <laughs> like, let's drive over there and see what this young brother's doing. Because it's obvious hustling because it's about 105 degrees. And yeah. you can understand uh, yeah. Robin being from Atlanta, what that weather is like. And, you know, he's over there in the shed. And we go over there. And it's this guy, Ryan, uh, um, who, you, you know, who was on this team that we sort of lost track of. And he was on, mm -hmm. you know, track and, you know, AAU yeah. basketball. Yes, sir. And so what he does is he says, you know, what I'm doing is I'm selling uh, uh, water so I can pay my way through school because I lost my scholarship, this, that, and the other thing. So I, you know, give him a few dollars and take, you know, a, you know, a lot of the water. Yeah. And it ends up, his name is Ryan Coogler. And it's this film called Fruitvale Station, mm. which wins these awards. Then he makes wow. a series of other films, including Rocky, and he wow. makes this film that's centered in West Oakland called Black Panther, no. right? And he marries uh, uh, Zinzi, who was his girlfriend, who he met on Tony Williams' track team, and wow. it's Ryan Coogler. And I'm still very good friends with his dad, uh, yeah. Ira, today. And what he does is he exercises his passion in Black history and culture yeah. through his films, and he does wow. teaching. So Robin, you're hundred percent right. That can be done, right? And, but that's the power of the intellect that these kids have, you know, regardless of, you know, where they come right. from or where their upbringing is. Right. But if they fully understand who they are, they do fantastic things. Yeah, that's powerful. Amazing, amazing. Wow, that is awesome. Ryan Cooper. Story. Like what a beautiful story, and it yeah. all began with just planting those seeds, Dr. Green. Amazing, oh. amazing, amazing. Oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're here talking to the awesome Mr. Tony Greenlee, one of the best lecturers and educators on the planet, in my opinion, uh, because what he does. And Robin, she's also a great one in her right too, as well. And we just thank her for being with us as a co host. Robin, you got another anymore? I want to make sure you get all your questions in because you're the, you're the key person here today. <laughs> well, well the, the last question I have, I want to know when, 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 is, when, it, when are you going to write your book? Because uh, we you know, know you got a lot to offer, Dr. Green. So when are you yeah. writing your book? You know what? Everybody asked me that. You know, I'm, I'm a, 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 you know, helping out a, a geologist now. Wow. Uh, on a book about the fall line. Oh. He he had gotten in contact with me and wanted me to tie in yeah. uh, African-American history to the fall line. And so that's yeah. what I'm doing right now. And, and you know, the, the fall line is over there, you know, in your neck of the woods on the East Coast. And it's the, you know, waterfalls and the rivers that run almost along I-95 over there. Okay. And it goes, it's about a 900 mile long uh, river system Oh, wow. And that's where most of the early plantations were developed is along that fall line. Hmm. And that's first uh, uh, anti-slavery rebellions are going to be launched uh, um, is along that fall line. Yeah. And that's where the nation starts to develop its wealth on our backs is along that fall line. So I'm you know, tying that in. And as far as my individual book, you know, my daughter, uh, um, who's a big wig and a uh, uh, and Samsung now, you know, I mean, she's up there. I don't even know what she does. <laughs> she's trying to, you know, press me to, you know, to write this book. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it's going to be coming. You know, I've got some students who've written, uh, you know, some, some good books, and I'm going to have yeah. to ask them for, for help. Uh, uh, yeah. When I met with, most recently, I took her out. Her name is Jessica Harrison. She's 24 years old. And to celebrate uh, her book uh, that's called The Power of Our Wounds. And what it is, uh, and Rob talking about, you know, history of who you are. And those stories are not always, you know, good stories, but they're mm -hmm. still stories. And yeah. her book is about, you know, uh, um, you know, it's about her history, right? And it's tied to, you know, some of the uh, negative aspects of, um, you know, that, that Black folks have been through as a result of our unfortunate history so uh, um you know i'm going to be reaching out to some of these students uh yeah you know you know for their 
you know, for their help in writing this book. Amen. Amen. You know, also too, Robert, as, as he was talking, you know, make sure you get a cameraman and a video man that follows you around everywhere you go when you start that book and start gathering that content because mm -hmm. uh, they need to capture every word you're saying up to the book uh, release, you know, <laughs> so they can use it as they need it as well. Because I know some thoughts will be coming to you that uh, we wish we had a written it down, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. Right. Be, be concerned there. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Power Connections with my wonderful guest, Mr. Anthony Green. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a wonderful historian. He's a mentor. He's a guest lecturer around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, he's also a coach, but he's also a great teacher, an educator of the Advanced Placement African American Studies at Bishop O'Dowell High School in Oakland, California. And we're here talking to him about the uh, program, Advanced Placement African American Studies, with my wonderful co host, Robin Butler. Robin, any other questions? I want to make sure you get yours in before we go to the last question and final thoughts coming up. I could go all day long with that. I know. Easy. He has so much to offer, but yeah. I yield to time because we, you, we are on a time frame. So, no but that, it, that was my last question. Hey, man, I thank you so much. Well, first of all, I want to give honor again <clears throat> to Mr. Green. Uh, man, we just thank you, man. I, matter of fact, when I saw you on the network there, I said, man, I got to try to get him on. And I started crying. Now, one thing, uh, as you know, we talked about this before. I want to uh, ask again, because the, the uh, interviewer asked you this question, as a Black man, how important it is for you to teach this area, brother? Well, I'm trying not going to try not to get emotional. Like I know, I, I know, broadcast. man. It got me fired. I'm still emotional right now. But but you know the, the reason why I got emotional, and I'll yeah. I'll explain it. And you, you'll understand. Yes, you know, um, since I'm you know really big on history, I look into my family's history. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, um, and, and you know the, the same thing with my wife. The name is Marguerite Green, and she keeps keeps me grounded. And she's got yeah. you know, her family's from Memphis, Tennessee, so she's yeah. got the same strong history. Yes, but sir. if you look at the history of some of the men in our uh, in in our uh, in our background, yeah. Uh, you know, I come, you know, I think about my, uh, you know, my great, great grandfather, who yeah. was one of the biggest property owners in uh, Ocala, Florida. Wow. Okay, he went to McCary uh, um, HBCU. Uh, he's from South Carolina originally with his five brothers. And they, you know, traveled to Florida because since we were speaking about Florida early, yeah. because, you know, Florida at the time was a swamp, you know, in the late yeah. 19th century. And so yes. they went down there and made the land down there productive, Wow! right? And he creates this huge farm. He has his own, uh, uh, he has a textile mill. He creates his own militia because at the time he's down there, Rosewood had been attacked. So he mm. has his own militia down there. He has his own bank, right? Mm. He wow. helps raise some of the early uh, Kentucky Derby horses because wow. Ocala is horse country. But then he gradually loses that property over, you know, uh, um, over decades, just yeah. like African-American people right. lost the 20 million acres of property we owned in the South, hmm. right? Uh, uh, post reconstruction, we lose 20 million acres of property, you know, from, you know, close to, to 1900 to the present, 20 mm -hmm. million acres of property. So there needn't be any, uh, uh, you know, wealth gap. So that's one of the stories. Right. You know, I told you about my dad, Arnold Green Sr. story, and my stepdad, Papa, we call him Arthur Hebert. You yes, know, sir. he's from Scottonville, Scotlandville, uh, Louisiana. His father was lynched, right? Also a property owner. And so right. Papa was drafted in World War II uh, into the military. He was part of the first Black Marine Division. Mm. Right. So it wasn't the Montford Point mm. Marines like a lot of people think. Yeah, yeah. He was on the Iwo Jima campaign at 17 years of age. And since he was a black uh, uh, GI and they weren't necessarily letting all black troops fight for America, right. he was a, a stretcher bearer, right, along the Iwo Jima campaign. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, you know, one of the pictures I used, I, it, it was it was a book called uh, uh, Superman Smashes the Klan. DC comic book, uh, Gene Yang is a good friend of mine. He's the one who did American Born Chinese. Wow. So I uh, um, you know, was a historical reviewer on his book called uh, um, Superman Smashes a Klan because Superman was an anti-Klan, anti-Nazi figure mm -hmm. at, during World War II. So Papa's picture was in there. And Papa used to tell me stories about 
you know, this one uh, battle in particular called the Battle of Peleliu. It's the worst battle in American history in terms of casualties. And it was on one island. And what he did, did is he was a, a, a stretcher barrier, stretcher uh, um, bearer. Yes, so sir. what he did is he recovered bodies and body parts of GIs, wow. right? And he did yeah. that for two years. And he was stuck on a beach for 45 straight days. Wow. Right. Yeah. And he lived, but he was stuck on a beach, you know, because they were firing at him. Right. And right. so one of the things he told me is you never, ever, 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 ever quit wow. because you never know what's going to happen. And he ends up being a very joyful person. He survives 95. And, and we, we had, uh, um, and he and my mom's uh, uh, 25th wedding anniversary, yes, we had a dance yeah. contest between him and his little brother, Ivan. So Arthur, or Papa, 95 years old, and he had a dance contest against his little brother, Ivan, who was <laughs> 93 years old. Wow. And uh, Ivan, you know, was actually at Port Chicago, you know, the biggest munitions factory probably in the history of the world that wow. blew up. Right, it's right here uh, uh, by me in in wow. uh, Pittsburgh, California. But it wow. blew up, instantly killing about three hundred black GIs. Wow! And he wow. survives that. Papa wow. survives this Iwo Jima campaign, and they have this dance contest, and I've got pictures of it. Yeah. You know, ninety five years old versus ninety three years old, and they were very joyful, and they were getting down. Right, and so that's the strength of who we are, you know, as people. Yeah, that's the strength uh, of who we are as people. So that's, that's what that question took me back to, Kevin. Yeah, that's right. powerful. I can see why he's on a mission now, Sister Robin, uh, based on that history that he has just within himself and his family. That's powerful, powerful. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all across the network here, thank you so much for joining us. I want you guys to share this out. Those are listening live right now, share it out. I want at least three or 400 times. Y'all push this out. Y'all pushing all that other stuff out there. I want you to push this show out right now on the platform that you see it on right now. So thank you so much for that. Hey, Brother Green, our final uh, question there. I, we talked about some books. Could you please share some books that you recommend that we have in our library to read and understand and to share out as well? Any books you would recommend, sir? We can have. All right. I've got a list, so I've got to take a look at the list. You yeah, know, no, first no, of all, no. we talked about, uh, we talked about uh, um, Jessica Harrison's book. Okay. You know, Jessica Harrison, The Power of Our Wounds, very powerful book. Yeah. Uh, we've got Monique Morris, Dr. Monique Morris. Mm. Um, uh, she's got a book called Cultivating uh, Joyful Learning. Yeah. For wow. Learning Spaces for Black Girls. Joyful Learning, I love it. <laughs> yes, Cultivating Joyful Learning for yeah. Spaces for Black Girls. Wow. She's got a book called Sing a Rhythm, Dance and Blues, a book called Push Out. All right. So I def definitely recommend those. Okay. Yeah. Regina Mason, uh, author Regina Mason, who writes a book about one of her ancestors who was one of the first black millionaires who was formerly enslaved mm -hmm. at the turn of the century. It was called The Life and Times of William Grimes, a runaway slave who becomes mm -hmm. a millionaire. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, uh, one of the our presenters at uh, Howard University uh, this past summer, uh, Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham, mm -hmm. uh, along with Henry Louis Gates, has a book out called African American Lives. And mm -hmm. Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham's father um, was, uh, um, you know, along with Carter G. Woodson, was responsible for establishing the yeah. first Negro History Week. All right. <laughs> so I would definitely recommend that book. You know, yeah. World's Great Men of Color by J.A. Rogers, uh, African History by Joseph E. Harris, um, Martin and Malcolm and America oh. by the economist James Cone. Wow. Um, of course, a book that we use in uh, Advanced yeah. Place in African American History, the autobiography of Malcolm X, and I've used it for the last 35 years. Yes, sir. Wow. Uh, a book called uh, uh, Race, the Power of an Illusion. Mm. Uh, African intellectual heritage. Uh, let's see. The African Origins by Czech Anta Diop. Yes. Uh, the Golden Age of the by Ivan Van Sertema. Uh, in Africans and Their History by Basil Davidson. 
Yeah, I've got a, a library yeah. of about yes, 800 sir. books, yeah. so exactly. I just, I, I'll just keep going on, but yeah. I'm going to stop. Yeah, I appreciate you so much. Yeah, we know how to get in touch with you, sir, about that list. So we're going to do that in the future as we need it. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Powerful, powerful. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Mr. Anthony Green. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a lecturer and educator, and he is a wonderful, wonderful teacher as we talk about the advanced placement of African-American studies uh, there in Oakland, California, at one of the high schools. And I believe uh, also, too, Brother Green, correct me if I'm wrong, is it's, uh, it's, going, it's in 60, 60 schools now, but scheduled to do 800. Is that go to 800? Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So 800 this coming school year from Man. 60. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. That, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Brandy Waters has yeah. really done a beautiful job. So yeah. if you want to look up a real star in the yeah. establishment of this course, Dr. Brandy Waters, Amen. very, very young, right? energetic yeah. woman amen well robin you know we got to try to get her on the network with us as soon as possible so brother green if you could put a little plug in there that we may be con we will be contacting her maybe she'll give us some time if she got time <laughs> that would be powerful that would be powerful thank you so much for that hey ladies and gentlemen this is power connection we're going to rewind this thing up because we are excited about this day this is a, one of the best programs all year uh, with mr anthony green ladies and gentlemen as we talk about the advanced uh, placement African American Studies program that he teaches in Oakland, California. Robin, any final words? And we'll give our guests, of course, the last words there as well. Any final thoughts, my dear, before we get, keep moving here? So, you know, people always want to know how to find people. So yeah. um, I think I've been saying Dr. Green the whole interview, and I, and, and I just looked at his resume, and it's like, Mr., but I just believe somebody's going to give you an honorary doctorate based on the work that you've already done and the yeah. results you've gotten from the work that you've done. But Mr. Green, if people wanted to follow you and continue to see the work that you're doing, how would they find you? Uh, well, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if you look What's up- What's your handles uh, there? What's your handles on Instagram you know, and Facebook? You know what? I'm really not even sure. But if you, if you look at if you look at Tony Green, that's where you find me. You okay, know? we'll have to look for you on, as Tony Green on Instagram. And yes, my, if my grand my my granddaughter, uh, um, you know Fabian uh, uh, Fabian Bond, she's out of uh, uh, Dallas Fort Worth. If she was here, she would straighten me out, and she would you know technology. You know she was my she's my technical advisor. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. But other than that, I'm lost. Uh, love it, love that's it, no love problem. It. Yeah, we'll help him out, Robin. We'll have to help him out a little bit, make sure we, we get him more exposure uh, to these areas. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. That's powerful. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Robin, for that. And thank you so much for sharing how people can get in touch with you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, also, too, get in touch with, if you want to get in touch with Brother Green uh, to, or Robin through me, give me a holler, guys, if you want to learn more about this wonderful subject that we're talking about on African American studies. Just give me a holler, guys, put it in the chat. Put it in the message board, you know, wherever you're seeing this out on the platforms. This is also going out on YouTube. So I want to hear from you guys from around the country and around the globe as well on that top, on that area. Well, Brother Green, we want to give you some final thoughts, my friend. Eric. I want to give you that time. Take your time, if you will. We'll go to about 10 more minutes or so. But if you would, any final thoughts or action items or things you want us to do? <laughs> you're like, what's this? Yeah. Do? Say one thing. You know, the class is place in African-American history is not just for African-American students. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's for the mm -hmm. education system as a whole. Yes. Right, if we're gonna yeah. succeed, and, and Robin, again, this goes back to one of the questions that you asked earlier. Mm -hmm. If we are to succeed as a republic, you know, we have to work together, yeah. right? Because unless civic virtue is inspired, yeah. right, unless we look together collectively, yeah. solutions are not going to be apparent. And in a $25 trillion economy, there's no reason why these solutions cannot be apparent. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look as a, uh, um, as a nation at exploring more ethnic studies, yeah. right? And the students should look uh, uh, more into researching their own collective histories, their family histories, yeah. find out how they made it. Right. Who in their family, who in their, you know, who amongst their yeah. elders made those sacrifices right. necessary for them to succeed yeah. and in many cases thrive. And, 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 and I tell you, and, and, you know, my students do a great job of that. So I'd like yeah. to, you know, to shout out to my all my students, you yeah. know, the 
one from you know 1980 when I started teaching, you know, all the way up to the basement, uh, um, you know, classes last year who built the game, the projects they created. Can, yeah. can I tell you about my favorite project they did? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the, they did a uh, project, uh, um, and the overall uh, uh, class was dedicated on you know for the whole year is def uh, um, finding the reasons for the wealth gap amongst wow. African Americans. Wow. This year, it's going to be finding the reason for the health gap, right? But what they did is they started looking at uh, a unit that covered the global reach of the Mali Empire. And that was one wow. of the units. So what we did is we wow. looked at the civilization of Mali. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. looked at the universities, Timbuktu, and the oldest university still open, yeah. uh, called yeah. the University of Corinne uh, uh, in Morocco, opened by two black women, uh, Miriam and Fatima Alfieri, in yeah. 8 6 AD, and it's still open today, mm -hmm. right? And we looked mm -hmm. at that education system and how they use that ed education system and the wealth of uh, uh, Mansa Musa, the wealthiest man in history, mm -hmm. right, to finance a global journey across the uh, uh, Atlantic, right, by Abu Bakari II, who was Mansa Musa's brother. Wow. And it was financed by Mansa Musa. Yeah. And so what we did is I've, I've got a, a former student um, who has this nonprofit, his name is Eric Jones, and the nonprofit is called Project C Valor. And what he does is he's got 12, uh, um, you know, he's got a number of yachts and he dedicates uh, uh, his uh, um, yachting on the bay and out in the Pacific yeah. to taking care of people who've been affected by post-traumatic stress. Wow. So military, public yeah. service, or students who are from very troubled backgrounds and he takes them out there. And he also does the historical lessons. So we went out there, uh, uh, you know, some of the students in the class and yeah. actually looked at the currents. We looked at wind readings. We wow. sailed around the bay. Yeah. And we determined how long it would have taken for the Mali Empire to reach the Americas. Wow. And how long it would have taken various uh, uh, slaving vessels to reach the Americas. And what he determined, he sailed around the world many times, mm. and he determined that it would have taken the Mali Empire, because they would take a, a current, a yeah. canary current directly from West Africa, about okay. 40 days. Wow. But they had the logical wherewithal to do it. Right. The slaving ships, it took them a matter of months because yeah. they didn't have the technological wow. uh, wherewithal to do it. And right. Mali does it at least a century before the Spanish attempted you know, that transatlantic voyage, at least a century before, yeah. because they had the educational systems. Yeah. They didn't go through the dark ages like Western Europe went through the dark right. age. Right. It was the Moors that brought them, these North African Muslims who brought Western yeah. Europe out of the dark ages and they took some of their technology. But Mali had that technology in the 14th century. Right. So that was and then we tied that the global reach of the Mali Empire, you know, to our redlining and gentrification field trip that we took to West Oakland, where the students actually, you know, participated in black businesses in West Oakland to the tune of about three thousand uh, uh, dollars. Lois, yeah. the pie queen restaurant, the oldest black in Oakland, uh, Marcus Garvey bookstore, the oldest books, wow. black bookstore in the United States and the the Black Panther Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, Jill Gilcrest Black Panther Museum in West Oakland. And we tied all these projects together with uh, um, Dr. Brandy um, Summers Thompson, you know, an urban geograph geographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is all right. This is great, Robin. I know we got a little delay there. Yeah. But it's going to come back in a few seconds, I believe. UC Berkeley. And they created a project based on that. But that was my favorite. Oh, I love it. I love it, Brother Green. That's powerful. And uh, Brother Green, can you hear us okay? We got a little delay. I there. can hear you now. It froze oh, okay. up a little bit. Oh, yeah, yes, that's okay. That's now. all right. Hey, Brother Green, I was just thinking about you was talking. Uh, and, and do you have you met Angela Davis? You know what? Have not met Angela Davis directly. She lives okay. here in Oakland. Okay. You know, I've, I've uh, um, 
you know, I've I've been to to uh, some of her speaking engagements. Yeah. And I've met other people uh, yeah. who were in the Panthers who are still around, but I've yeah. not met Davis directly. Hey, Amen. That's all right. Yeah, I just thought about that, Robert, because that was one of the uh, one of the areas, of course, where she lectures now. She lectures in that area, I believe. Too, yes. well. That's powerful. Oh, man. Uh, Robert, any final thoughts before we get rolling here? Good. No, if I'm done, I just uh, want to say thank yeah, you, Dr. Yeah, Green. Yeah, and and yeah, my, my biggest, my biggest takeaway, um, yeah, yeah. And what you've imparted into me is that yeah. when we know our history, there you go. Whether, it, whether it's filled with successes yeah. or whether it's filled with trauma. Yeah. But in that is our greatness. So yeah. I just want to say thank you, sir, for yeah. imparting yeah. into us today and particularly imparting that into me. Thank Amen. You. Yeah, same guy. Right. Diddle, diddle that with Sister Robin, uh, Brother Green as well. And I can tell you guys, I'm getting empowered right now. Again, I almost ran out the studio here. I said, let me, you can't run out the studio <laughs> right now. But I was so excited because it empowers one uh, to understand, mm -hmm. hey, I am that I am. You know, I am who I am and I'm great. I am uh, awesome. I am uh, capable of doing, especially of the dreams and goals that I already have. You know, I want to be an engineer. And somebody's saying, I can't do it. And I'm saying, wait, I can be an engineer. Now I know for sure I can do, I can be an engineer. Nobody can stop you, folks. And that's what the history of this class is so important about. Now, Advanced Placement African-American Studies gives you the side of history, the truth, the real truth about our history, folks, as it relates to Black American uh, uh, African-American Studies, the truth about it so we can understand where we're going as well. And it all ties together and it's so empowering, Brother Green. So thank you again, man. Take my hat off to you, man. Salute you several times and love to have you back uh, periodically as well as you want to. This is also your platform. So you feel free to come back and share some updates, news, anything you have that's gonna help our nation, help our people grow uh, in this area. Wow, incredible. Mr. Green, thank you so my much pleasure. for your time, man. Appreciate you. And please let your family know uh, thank you for your time today uh, as well. Thank them as well for letting you come on as well. I think I saw on your on the school website that your wife teaches at the same place, I believe. Is that correct? Or, yes. She you... actually uh, co-moderates the yeah. uh, Black Students Union uh, with yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's Marguerite wild. Green. In yes, fact, sir. yeah, she actually runs the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, she, yeah, I saw her picture on the network. She is beautiful and powerful. Thank, tell her thank you so much. And she's welcome, too, to come on and talk about any topic she would like. Definitely will. To area as well. Appreciate you so much. Hey, guys, we got to go. Hey, my wonderful co-host, Robin Butler, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate you. Uh, couldn't have done it without you today. That was powerful. I love it. Hey, our president, uh, 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 awesome, awesome guest today, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony Green, ladies and gentlemen, historian, mentor, lecturer, uh, guest lecturer around the globe. He's also a wonderful coach as well. But most of all, he is a teacher and educator of the uh, advanced program, placement, advanced placement program, ladies and gentlemen, African American studies in Oakland, California. And I would highly recommend you get in touch with me uh, so I can pass on the information if you want to learn more about this program and uh, get in touch with Doc uh, directly. I, I'm call, I'm going to call him Dr. Green, uh, uh, Sister, <laughs> Sister Butler, uh, from now on. So I believe he's earned that right, no doubt about that. 30 plus years in the business, that's powerful. So uh, we, we need to work on that, figure out how to get him an honorary doctorate there. Uh, right. on that, no doubt about it. So thank you so much. Hey, guys, I want you to remember to always, always be learning, be moving forward, folks. Uh, Doc, uh, excuse me, uh, Brother Green had recommended some books. I want you guys to order those books, get those books into your family. Uh, specific, I know the summer is almost over here in, in Atlanta. Atlanta is getting ready to go back to school again. But for next summer, you should be planning, moms and dads, you should be planning to get some of these books and share those with your children, with your young people to read. Now, you may have to pay them, right? <laughs> A little bit to do that, but give them some assignments for reading. And I want to encourage the reading is so important, folks. Encourage your children to read more, your young adults to read more. And I almost encourage people to read everything, the right thing, of course, but read everything as possible just for knowledge and information and to gather your wonderful thoughts together on a specific area so you can grow and know there's nothing that can't stop you if you have the information. Hey, guys, I want to leave you with this real quickly. Remember to always, always out love, out serve and out forgive each other. And remember that Jesus is Lord. Remember the kingdom of God is within you guys. It's within you. You have the power to do what you have 
been ordained to do by the creator God. So thank you so much for being with us today, God. Hey, this is Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn, Robin Butler, and my special, special guest, Mr. Anthony Green. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. God bless you. Amen. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time. Hey, don't forget, guys, to share this out. I want you all to share this out on your platforms at least 50, 60 times and push that out so we can get the numbers up on the YouTube channel as well. So thank you again, guys. Appreciate you so much.